Hello, everyone. Um, so the next topic is high risk, high reward. The deliberate move from tech giants to the startup world. So for this, I would like to welcome Sarah Hildebrandt. Um, first, uh, I would like to give a little bit of introduction about her. So she's, manage she's the managing director of Vimato, as well as an expert in people management, coaching, cross country, and multilingual leadership and the account management. She's going to speak about one of our favorite topics, what are the risks and the rewards when a person moves from the giant tech companies to a startup world? I think this is gonna be very interesting for a lot of you people since these days, a lot of people would like to open their own startup companies. So thank you, Sarah, for joining us uh, today. I hope you're doing well. Yes, I do, thank you. And uh, you can start the presentation now, the stage is yours. Perfect. Um, so I hope you hear me. I hope you see me. And I hope you see my presentation as well. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here at my talk, taking your time. And I will keep it short, uh, a short introduction about myself as well. Sarah Hildebrandt, you've heard. Um, I'm CSO and CMO of Imato. And Vimato is actually the company name. We're just launching a new product called Ananas Insights. So what do we do? We deliver data-driven social media insights. Specifically, we analyze Instagram followers through a machine learning tool. Next to being one of the managing directors of Vimato, I'm a coach and mentor specialized in young professionals thriving for leadership roles. Um, so what I will be doing today is talk about how a career does not have to be as straight as I always thought. My own journey is a good example of being very, taking very different steps, bringing me exactly to where I want to be now. I moved deliberately from the fascinating tech giant world to the chaotic, but actually very charismatic startup world. Um, so I started um, studying Japanese language and culture in Leiden. Afterwards, I worked at managing uh, at marketing and sales, first for a Dutch flower wholesaler in the Westland. Why? Well, I really don't know. I never knew what to do. I was always so impressed by those kids who already knew at school what they wanted to become, like a teacher or a doctor. And now, years later, some of them actually are doing what they always dreamt of. But I just really didn't know. I didn't know as a kid. I didn't know at university, after university. And sometimes I'm not even sure if I know now, but I'm closer at least. I was good at maths and wanted to do something like that, but I just didn't know what exactly. My parents wanted me to study arts, but I didn't really care for that. And then they insisted that languages would be a good idea because I grew up with several languages, though that would be easy for me. And when I finally figured something out, I wanted to become a journalist. Languages didn't seem so bad. Somehow I ended up in Leiden studying Japanese and it was incredibly difficult. I mean, the language, the study, it was really tough. What did I learn there? A lot, but foremost that I did not want to go to Japan. I did not want to work for a Japanese company. So again, I was there without knowing what to do. And then I was recruited for this flower company and I just tried it out. I was really unsure because I thought that this decision would define the rest of my career. And I didn't know anything about flowers and I didn't really care for that sector. So I was really scared of it, but I didn't see any other options. So in the end, why not? From general marketing, I moved to online marketing, to project management, to account management. So actually I ended up in sales, but I felt like I was not done with studying. So I did an MBA because I wanted to have something giving me a better economical background. And I did it next to working full time. This was very challenging, but also a great decision. This actually brought me much closer to tech firms. As students, we were shown the German headquarters of Google in Hamburg. And I left that tour that night saying to my parents, that is the place I want to work. The funny thing is I was actually the only one of the group with that reaction. And about a year later, I was so happy starting at Google as a contractor. You know what? 
there are people with very diverse backgrounds. There it wasn't so exceptional to be a Japanologist. There were so interesting and diverse people. Career-wise, it was a step back for me as I had to do sales through the phone, which was really not interesting for me. It was not ideal, but it was the ideal place to work. And I decided that there must be a way growing inside of the company. And it worked out. So soon I would be learning how to build Google Ads, helping our clients upselling, cross-selling Google products. Not that much later, I became vendor manager. I was building up a team from three to 17 people in different countries. I was managing sales, marketing, data analyst teams, and I really loved it. There are those aspects everybody knows of. I mean, you hear about the great food, the perks, sports, team events, working in a hammock. And I really spend my life at work. I mean, I went there at seven in the morning to start at the gym. I had breakfast every morning with my team, and then we started working together. Often during my lunch break, I would do a sports class with great external trainers. During working hours, there would be barista trainings, for example. Even if I don't like coffee, it was fun. We did cooking lessons and so much more. After work then, we went for drinks or had other team events. We volunteered a lot. We had great trips, so much fun. After those four years at Google, I went on to build sales teams for Twitter and PayPal, remotely from home. Also nice, but I really missed the perks. I missed the people around me. I missed my teams. Right now, during a pandemic, this is normal to be at home and do the things on your own. But a couple of years ago, it was not yet. And also all my friends around me, they moved between the different tech giants. They moved from Google to Facebook, to Twitter, to Salesforce, LinkedIn, and so forth and so forth. And everybody tells you about how much money they make, how great events their companies organize, what great what great perks they have, all those nice things. But I have to say, something in me was just not attracted to that anymore. I did not want to be part of that ecosystem anymore. And some people compare it like to a golden cage where people have everything, but often can really enjoy it. I had a great time and I don't regret it one second. I wouldn't miss it. Actually, if I could go back in time, I would start there immediately after university. It's a great place for young people. And yes, the experience at a more traditional company was valuable as well, but I would have enjoyed the Google experience right away. I've learned so much there, and I know it opened me a lot of doors. Who knows, maybe I'll go back eventually. But I just knew at that point that I needed something completely new. So I thought about becoming self-employed. I've been working as a translator since I was a student, so that was an option. I'm also a certified coach, another good option. But I also did not want to change from having those big teams and all those people around me to be completely on my own. So I decided to look for small startups. I was too afraid to found a company at that point myself. And also I didn't have that great idea. And I thought maybe this would be a step in between. And what happened then was actually Vimato. So I was approached uh, by a tech startup that was already almost two years old. And one of the founders uh, wanted to leave. So it was the perfect fit. A market-ready product, two smart founders taking me in like I was one of them, and a lot of flexibility. The downsize? Much less money than the big companies pay. No secure job. I mean, I knew the startup had needed money. They had money problems, and don't they always do? <laughs> And also being a managing director, you're responsible for everything that is done. On the other hand as well, the moment wasn't ideal. Last year, COVID, two small kids, a mortgage, but hey, no risk, no fun. And my life changed completely. No perks anymore, no yoga or high intensity trainers, no organized trips. On the other hand, no quarterly reviews, no targets. If I don't do it myself, it doesn't happen. I need to learn that nobody is looking over my shoulders, but I, I sorted out that I'm able to put myself under the necessary pressure. Also, I have the flexibility that I want. I can go for a run at 10 in the morning if I don't have a meeting. If someone wants to go for a coffee, I'm usually available because I'm not in that corporate hamster wheel anymore. Of course, I work in the weekends or in the evenings, but I don't mind because I really love my job. So what is right for you? 
When it comes to people and mindset, I notice there's a great difference between people. Some are happy with a regular job they can do for years and years, retire at the same company they started. There's nothing wrong with that. Those people will be happy at more traditional companies. At Google or other similar innovative companies, there were very driven, highly talented people. So when I was recruiting for those jobs, the most important was not the education or the experience. It was if the people had the drive and that eagerness. And that's actually the same when it comes to startup people. They are also very driven and motivated. I really love that spirit. But the pressure put on you from a corporate structure at big companies makes a lot of people unhappy. It doesn't matter how cool a job or function is, you always have to do things you like less and that's no problem. The problem comes when you A, don't feel like you have a choice, B, when you feel your tasks are not leading anywhere. In many companies, you end up doing so many little tasks that seem unproductive that you're not about your own actual job. Like administration, holiday planning, meetings on completely different topics. It takes time and energy, and it's fine when you're doing for it for your own company, but when you're doing it for a corporate, it feels different. And C, also having to fit into a mold is not letting you explore yourself probably. So there came a time when I was able to control so much and decide for myself and my teams. My span of control was quite big. Still in the end, there would be so many people around the globe doing exactly the same job that I felt like being a number. And at a small company that's different, you immediately see your input converting into results. You can decide so much on your own and create your place to work and your role. This gives a lot of satisfaction and self-determination is definitely vital. So what is better? That really depends on you, on the circumstances, your preferences, your needs, the moment in your life. I think for me how it went was the best possible way. I really enjoyed big corporates. I now understand more traditional companies as well as modern tech giants. Learned so much, but now my startup is perfect for me. And who knows it is the perfect in-between step before I found something on my own. We'll see about that. Or maybe I go back to the corporate life. Also, it gives me the chance to mentor and coach young professionals, something that gives me so much energy and is a great chance to share my experience. What I think needs to be emphasized is that young people already have the option to start something on their own or join a little startup beside it. It is a path that's not easy, it can be challenging and lonely, but it's an option at any stage of your career. And I wish I had known that earlier. So many years I was afraid that I chose the wrong study, the wrong path. I thought a specific route in my school school trajectory would be defining what I would do as an adult. I thought that first job would define my career, but it didn't. I'm still able to change my way and I'll still be in 20 years. And I want you to go to the next talk with knowing that you have so many opportunities. You just have to dare and grab them. Just do what looks better right now. And that actually already would be it from my side. So just shoot if you have any questions. Hello. Hi. Hello, Sarah. Thank you so much. Um, I think now we can start the question and answers. Um, So the first question uh, we have is that, why should a person work with a startup instead of a giant company? (laughs) Because it definitely gives you much more freedom to um, put your energy and your idea into a product that you are shaping on your own. I mean, it is great to work for a big company because of all that stuff around it. But the only way to really do what you want is to do it on your own or with a very small group of people. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Another question uh, we have is that, uh, do you have to fear if you feel like working in a startup company, you see the the company isn't doing well, how, how would you take on this? Like, what, what, what would be your take on it? 
I guess you have to think about why isn't it going well? I mean, is there anything that you can do about it? And being small companies, you are you are able to change something. If you see it's going the wrong direction, maybe it's not the perfect market fit, you can change the strategy. Or if you feel like um, the pricing isn't right or the product in itself, all those things, you are able to change it. And if you really are going the wrong way, sometimes it's better to just stop it, <laughs> just decide, okay, this was a failure and start something new. I mean, then you can still go for a corporate job or you can start a new startup. Everything is possible. And I think that especially specifically here in Europe, we don't have that that failure mentality. In America, it's very normal to have had, I don't know, like 10 startups that didn't work out and that's fine. And here it is different. Um, and I would say the Netherlands are already more progressive than the most other European countries. But uh, here it's very often still that people expect you to create that great company at the when you're 18 and immediately become a millionaire. And you have to also be aware that the chances aren't that high, that most companies at the beginning will actually fail, but it's not a real failure because you still learn from it and you can then put what you've learned into the next company. And if you later decide to go into a corporate job, why not? I mean, that option is still there. And definitely big companies, they usually are very happy with the people that have already found it because they appreciate, they know that there's a lot of work in that and they, they will take you very seriously for this. Well, this was a really wonderful piece of advice. So I think that that's, you uh, rightly said that the, you have to accept the failure and I think that's how you have to go about it. Well, thank you so much. I think with this, uh, there's another question which says, can we compete with the tech giant after running your own startup? How to be optimistic about this thought? Um, what do you mean with compete with the tech giants? I mean, um, after running your own startup, of course, as I said, you, you are able to go back, I think, because usually depending, of course, for what positions, they are very interested in you if you already run your own uh, company. And or I don't know if I understood the question very well, or if you already have built your own uh, startup, which is going well. It depends if you're very niche, you are able to compete with the, te uh, with the bigger companies or there's always the exit um, strategy being bought. I mean, big um, companies, what they often do is buy smaller startups. So if you're interested in that, that's definitely a good way to go. Yeah, I think, thank you. Um, with this, I think we, we end this uh, question and answer session. Uh, if you have further question or if you would like to reach out uh, to Sarah, she has her LinkedIn profile. You can just um, search as in Sarah Hildebrandt and you'll be able to reach out to her. And uh, thank you so much again, Sarah, for your wonderful time and gave us um, this uh, beautiful thought of like how to process your mindset and keep the mindset for the startup environment. So yeah, really, really appreciate that you're taking time off for us today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for that chance. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.